Welcome to Restored Life Radio. At Restored Life, we believe you were created for a great purpose with great promise and provision. That's why we're here. We're here to help you overcome the obstacles that keep you from the pinnacle you were meant for. And now, here's our Restored Life coach, Dwayne Wolf. Today's broadcast is touching on some of the most exciting things ever as we think about renewing the mind, thinking how God wants us to think, and thinking in alignment with God's Word. I want to open the broadcast just with Psalm 103. You're going to hear us talking about how powerful it is to think on God's benefits. Serving God has tremendous benefits, and He wants us to renew our mind, thinking constantly about how good He is. Actually, Romans 2 4 says it's His kindness that draws us to repentance. Think about that. The word repent means change your mind, and I like to think of it as change your mind about God. The word actually says that. It's His kindness. When we see His kindness, when we are observing, made aware, when we understand how good God wants to be to us, that will cause us, help us, give us fuel to change our mind about God. Instead of thinking that He's the worst ever, the cosmic killjoy, the problem of all problems, we begin to think that He has wonderful things in mind for us. Let's go right to the broadcast now, and thank you again for coming to Restored Life Radio. This is such a great psalm because uh, it really um, it really gives us uh, the framework of how good God is toward us. Um, Bless the Lord, O my soul. This is a psalm of David, King David. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not forget not His benefits. Is what? He's got benefits. Is that the craziest thing ever? We are never told of the benefits of Satan. Isn't that interesting? Uh, maybe there are some. I don't know. Could be. Uh, greater levels of sickness. Oh, that's good. Part- partnership with the curse. Oh, that sounds good. Deeper levels of profanity. Oh, that sounds wonderful. High levels of anger and cursing. Ooh, that that could be quite a benefit. Um, But God has all these benefits, right? He forgives all your sin. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit. He crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. He satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Isn't that cool? Isn't that just great? I mean, God is so good. And when we turn to him in faith, when we turn to him with our heart, when we turn to him desiring to walk with him, then he in turn is able to begin to pour out these benefits on us. Now, it's interesting, but these benefits flow. It's like... um, um, The benefits of God flow out of the storehouse. That's maybe a good way to say it. The benefits of God flow out of the storehouse of God. Everybody say storehouse. Storehouse. Now, do you know how to get the benefits of God out of the storehouse? You have to fence, you have to spend your faith bucks. You have to spend your faith bucks. Everybody say faith bucks. Okay, so um, in other words, I'm, I'm trying to make this simple, but I think this is really important, right? Is because some people are going to read Psalm 103, forget not his benefits, forgives all your sins, heals all your diseases, renews your youth like the eagle, satisfies your years with good things. Some people are going to read that and say, well, that hasn't happened for me. That didn't happen for Aunt Mildred. That didn't happen for Preacher Joe. That didn't happen for for uh, Uncle Albert. And I know he went to church every single Sunday. Okay, so going to church 
does not does not make does does not. It's, it's, I want I want to go into the car, the garage thing. You know, that's where I want to go. Okay. Putting you in the garage does not make you a car. Okay, you going to church does not necessarily translate. You going to church is like uh, it could be. It could be you going to church. It could be like window shopping. You ever done that? Have you ever not had money to spend, but you went shopping anyway? Have you ever had money not to spend, no, no money to spend, you went shopping anyway, probably went shopping with a friend or whatever, and, you, you know, it was, remember, okay, the, the, back, I'm old. Back in the old days, they called this window shopping, right, okay, or whatever. So, you know, you kind of walk the store, you kind of touch stuff, you kind of look at it, oh, that would be cool, or, but maybe, you know, more than likely you're with a friend who does have money to spend, so you're just kind of hanging out, right? Okay. So, but going to church could be like that. Okay. It could be you actually go, you go to the storehouse where there's the dispensing of God's benefits, but you don't have any faith bucks to spend. Well, I trust you are growing and gaining from what we're sharing about God's Word, agreeing with God's Word, and just the power of renewing our mind. Renewing your mind is so important. The Word of God says that we will be transformed. That is, we'll take on another form. From from caterpillar to butterfly, we are transformed into all that God has for us by renewing our mind. That is, getting our mind yielded, reprogrammed, engaged, in agreement with God's Word and with who He's made us to be. Hey, I hope that you'll come to our website quickly, www.new hcc.com and come and join us at New Horizon. New Horizon is a church about restoration where heaven meets earth. We welcome you to join us Sunday mornings 10 o'clock, Saturday evenings 6 o'clock, five blocks off of I-5 in Fife, Washington. God bless you. Let's go back to the broadcast. You cannot buy clothing at Nordstrom or Macy's, if you don't have what? If you don't have Washington's in the pocket. If you don't have bucks in the wall that you cannot buy out of the storehouse, right? Likewise, the economy of heaven is believing. You have to believe. You have to have faith, right? That's the economy of heaven. So as long as you keep saying, well, I don't know. Well, I'm not sure. Well, I'll believe it when I see it, right? As long as you allow a little bit of unbelief. Now, I'm really going to mess with you, okay? How many of you uh, in the room are born again? Put up your hands if you're born again. Okay, so I'm just going to mess with you really quick. Um, I'm going to say something radical to you. I'm going to say that when you are struggling, if you're born again, if you are born again and you are struggling with faith, I'm going to suggest to you that's that's not that's just that's not just you struggling with faith. So I'm going to really mess with you now. Uh, if you're born again and you have read like scriptures like this. So you've received God, you've invited the Holy Spirit to be uh, your guide, your coach. You've invited Jesus to be your de- redeemer and savior. I'm going to suggest to you that when you come into storehouse realities where you need to go shopping for a promise from God, like a Philippians 4.19 promise, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches deposited in your account by Christ Jesus. You need to go shopping that you might have a need provided for. And all at once you feel kind of a struggle and a wrestling of doubt or fear or unbelief. I'm going, to in, I'm going to suggest to you that you need 
to take authority over that doubt or unbelief and kick out the doubt. That that is not the Holy Spirit ministering to your imagination. That is an unholy spirit ministering to your imagination. And James 4, 7, and 8 could apply right here. If you will resist, if you submit to Philippians 4, 19, what is it? My God shall supply all my need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Who are you in? As a born-again Christian, your life is hidden in Christ Jesus, right? Right? The resources given to Jesus by the Father belong to you because you are joined to him. He is living at the right hand of the Father as your advocate, your attorney, your representative, your high priest. Jesus is. And Father has placed upon him every good thing, and by virtue of you being in him, Father has placed upon you every good thing. So when doubt rises up, anybody ever deal with doubt? Unbelief, distrust, wonder, question, anybody? Okay. I want to encourage you, do an experiment from now on. Do an experiment, try this. Everybody say experiment. When that happens, say, act like, just pretend, pretend, everybody say pretend. Pretend. Just pretend for a moment, humor me, that maybe it's not you. You know it's not God. Maybe it's not you. And just for a moment, just say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I rebuke this influence of doubt and distrust of God right now. Influence of doubt and distrust of the goodness of my Father, I command you to leave my mind alone. Thanks again for tuning in to Restored Life Radio. We are so glad that you're with us. We want you to call today, 92 to 1502, that's the 253 area code, or email us as well at the Restored Institute, Restored Institute at Gmail, Restored Institute, all lowercase Gmail. God bless you. We're going back into the program now. Leave my imagination and my reasoning process alone. Get out of my conscious and subconscious mind right now. So I was thinking today, and I think it was the Holy Spirit thinking in me, uh, so I had these crazy thoughts. So as we think about renewing your mind, now we're not going to get into the whole lesson tonight. All I've given you is one segment out of the notebook. But what I was thinking about today is that the way you see things internally is extremely important. And one of Satan's major objectives to ruin your life is to get you thinking wrong. Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinketh, so is he. Proverbs 4, 20 says that out of the heart comes all of the issues of life. That's King James. But the word issues means the expanse or the boundaries. So it says guard your heart because out of your heart your boundaries for your whole life are set. Matthew 6.22 says that the way you see things, the way you see things determines a positive outcome or a negative outcome. If your eye, your vision, your perspective is dark then your whole life will be filled with darkness. So the way we think is really important. Amen? The way we think is really important. So I was thinking one of Satan's main goals 
is to twist, distort, or toxify our thinking. Think about this for a minute. If Satan can twist, distort, or toxify our thinking, he, his job is so well done that we go on to ruin the rest of our lives all by ourselves. Because once your thinking is twisted toward a negative perspective, a hopeless perspective, a despairing perspective, a victim perspective, a bitter perspective, a worthless perspective, a rejection perspective, once our thinking is twisted (laughs) toward negative instead of positive, and by the way, you can control a corporation if you just own 51% of the stock. He doesn't need every thought to be evil or negative just the majority. Just the majority. So this is one of Satan's main goals. When we think about renewing our mind, uh, God's word is, is uh, it's like a refreshment to renew our mind. Uh, the word is so powerful that we don't even understand how powerful it is. Um in terms of how it washes the wrong thinking out and replaces wrong thinking with right thinking. So um, once your thinking gets toxified, you will begin to promote your own destruction, right? So from birth, or maybe before birth, from birth and through circumstances from birth, Satan is working to train your mind. Your mind is learning how to process, how to react, how to protect, how to defend according to his counsel and his coaching. Now, in the midst of this, he's using pain, He's using disappointment. He's using abandonment. He's using hardship. He's using rejection. He's using loss. He's using theft. All of Satan's weapons, tools that are woven into the circumstances of our lives are all meant, none of them are a standalone event. Theft is not a standalone event. You with me? Abandonment is not a stand-alone event. Disappointment is not a stand-alone event. Everything like that is actually, I, everything like that, there is a, there's a message hooked to it meant to send you messages that cause you to think negatively about yourself, about your dreams, about people, about life, about God. Right? So there's a message woven. There's a message attached to every occurrence of loss or pain, injury, sorrow, harm, rejection. There's some kind of a message. I'm convinced even in small things, even in small things, there's a message attached and um, we're able, we're able to pick up or perceive that message. Oh, they don't like me. Oh, they don't want me here. Oh, I'm not valued. Oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, I'm the reason. There's these messages, 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 and this is this is the enemy bearing witness to negative circumstances so that woven within us is wrong thinking. Wrong thinking about life, about our future, about ourselves, about God, about others. Because again, if he can get your mind twisted toward negativity, then you will destroy yourself. You'll destroy your future. Because actually, he can't really destroy your future because you're sovereign over you. 
But if he leads you into a place where you will destroy your future, then he's done his work. Isn't that interesting? So Satan is trying to bathe you with failure. If you are bathed with failure, you will do one of two things. You'll either submit to it or you will resist it out of your own strength. Either one, he's one. If you submit to it, then you'll begin to frame your whole future out of failure. If you resist it out of your own strength, you will hire all of his temp workers to help you. Pride, anger, control, manipulation, rebellion. He has a host of temp workers. If you submit to failure, you'll hire a different set of temp workers. Not too long ago, Jimmy uh, Jimmy got a job down here for uh, McFarland Cascade down on the port. Derek did a very similar thing not too long ago. These guys get these jobs through these temp companies, temp agencies. And if they do a good job, then the company offers them to come on staff. So Jimmy ended up going to work at McFarland Cascade. They gave him... You know, at some point, I don't know how that works with labor ready or whatever. But they've got some kind of an agreement that at some point, if we like this guy after 90 days, you'll release him, we'll give you a fee, and we'll bring him on payroll. Right? Same thing with, happened with Derek a couple of years ago. Derek got a job for this uh, rendering company. And um, I think Todd Silver is the owner of somebody. I think it's somebody I know. And we got a job for this rendering company. He was doing great, great uh, under Labor Ready's auspices. But they liked him so well, they wanted to hire him full time. So they offered him a payroll position. I'm talking about the toxicity of our mind. In the book, the way I say it is what starts as a binky becomes a bondage. You didn't mean to become an alcoholic, you were just going to have one drink. You didn't mean to become a sexaholic. You were just (coughs) off on a hiatus of temporary pleasure. You didn't mean to become an angeraholic. You just wanted to show this person you're not going to be controlled any longer. You didn't mean to become fill in the blank. What starts as a binky becomes a bondage. Okay? happened to Jasmine, she didn't want to take her binky. So we just kept shoving it in, shoving it in. (laughs) Guess what? After a while, many of you know my daughter is an older girl now because I'm an old geezer. But she's 26, but when she was four, we couldn't get the binky away from her. Four started in the crib, and it lasted a long time, maybe five, I don't know. All right, so the point is, though, here's what happens. And this is, this is we have to think about this, is that all wrong thinking starts, or most wrong thinking starts out of these injuries, starts out of our history, starts out of our circumstances, and most of it starts in environments where we we don't it's natural reasoning to protect or defend we might not even have a higher system or a higher mechanism of protection provision or defense and so a lot of this starts wrong thinking starts and it doesn't start in our perspective with the premeditation that we want a bondage, it starts by us simply bringing on some short-term worker. You've been listening to Restored Life Radio. For more information on the Restored Life Institute, contact us at 253-922-1502.